Today we've got a great malicious compliance story about demanding to see what's on someone's computer. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, told to do what I have to do. A post in another group reminded me of this. I am a disabled veteran, and at the time this actually happened, I was solely depending on walking stick. I could not walk more than 10 feet maximum without assistance. I was asked by a friend to be a bridesmaid at her wedding. She quickly proved herself to be a bridezilla from heck, and everything had to meet her vision. Everything had to fall within her very rigid scope of what the aesthetics should be. She made a couple of what she claimed were innocent comments about my walking stick. I offered multiple times not to be a bridesmaid and would assist in any other way I could help. She refused every offer and insisted I had to be a bridesmaid. Then I heard from another close friend and also a bridesmaid that she was very upset that I was insisting on using my walking stick. She made a comment saying that she was just going to hide it and that I would just have to go without it. Looking at the mutual friend's face when she said that, she tried to laugh it off as a joke. Well, there was no doubt in my mind that she was going to try to have my walking stick go missing, so I made arrangements. Sure enough, the wedding rolls around and while getting hair and makeup, my walking stick disappears. I was not happy and told everyone I have to have it back. I cannot walk down the aisle without it. The bride insisted that they didn't know where it was and they looked everywhere and I was just going to have to make do. I said, so after you joked about taking my walking stick, it goes missing and you want me to make do? Her exact words were, you'll just have to do what you can do to get up the aisle. Cue malicious compliance. I texted my boyfriend. He went out to the car and brought in a mobility scooter that I'd rented just in case I needed it. I had him put it out of sight but where we could get to it easily and then here the other bridesmaids physically supported me. We made our way to the back of the hall for the start of the ceremony. The bride who had been talking to her father and not paying attention did not see the scooter until she started to walk up the aisle and there are her three bridesmaids. Two standing tall and me sitting on the most hideous looking multicolored with sparkles mobility scooter I could find. If looks could kill, she would have planted me. Within seconds of the ceremony ending, my walking stick had been found. She and her new husband brought it over to me and told me it had been found and I could get that god-awful scooter back out to the car. I mustered up a tear and told her I was so sorry, but I was in so much pain from having to try to walk without my walking stick that there was no way I'd be able to go without the scooter. I am very proud to say that the scooter is in over 90% of her wedding photos. Could you not argue and say that what OP did here was letting them get off very lightly for what they did? OP could have easily have caused a scene and make it known to everybody there that they stole their walking stick just because they didn't want people to see it in photos or see it during the ceremony. They should be grateful all OP did was bring that mobility scooter out. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy awesome stories of malicious compliance, why not hit those like and subscribe buttons down below? That said, our next story is, Karen doesn't want to follow enrollment procedure. Some many years ago, I worked customer service for a company that managed a Medicare Part D drug plans, and the annual enrollment period rolled around, and during that time, it got chaotic. On top of the usual caring for customers, answering their questions, fixing problems, we had to enroll people into our plans and it was a bit of a process. There were questions that needed to be asked and answered, information that had to be imparted, and at the end of it all, a long spiel explaining our responsibilities and the customer's responsibilities, and important information the customer had to verbally consent to. So in the midst of this, I get a woman who is angry she has to do this, and is angry at how much time the whole process is taking. I explain to her I'm trying to get her through this all as quickly as possible. Then we get to the end, and I explain that I have to read her the terms of service, and I need her to verbally confirm yes to it all. She immediately starts carrying on how she just doesn't have the time to listen to it. I tell her I am legally required to read this to her. She doesn't want to hear it, just sign her up. I explain again that to complete the sign-up process, I have to read this to her and she needs to acknowledge it. Another round of she doesn't want to hear it, doesn't want to agree to it, I can just skip it and sign her up. No, I can't. I can read through it quickly, however, she still needs to hear it and say yes. More arguing, she doesn't want to, let's just say she agrees to it and I can sign her up. By this time, I'm thinking, lady, if you had just let me read this instead of arguing with me, we could have been done by now, which I couldn't say. 
Instead, I inform her that I have to read this agreement to her and she needs to verbally agree to it. If she doesn't, I will not be able to sign her up for Medicare Part D, she will not have a Part D plan, she will not be able to enroll in a plan until the next year's enrollment period, and she will have to pay a fine for not having a plan this year. She ignores all that, tells me to sign her up, and hangs up. Of course, I don't sign her up. And I write down the whole incident in the call log that I explained several times that I needed to go over the agreement and get her consent. The penalties to her if she didn't, that she refused, and that I did not sign her up. Several weeks after the new year, a coworker sitting near me gets a call from a woman who is furious that when she went to get a prescription filled, the pharmacy wasn't able to run the insurance on it. And when they checked that she didn't have a Part D drug plan, the coworker asked for the woman's name, which was the woman who I didn't sign up. My coworker checked and said the caller did not have a plan with us. Worse for the caller, we could not enroll her since she had missed the enrollment period. Imagine how much easier things would have gone for everyone if that woman had just let me do my job and read the service agreement and she just said yes to it. This is a big part of covering your own butt. OP left extensive notes and god forbid if anything went wrong they would have had all of that written back up to rely on as proof. Especially when you know Karens like this love to complain about how somebody else is at fault for the whole thing, it can't be them. Our next story is, my aunt accused me of having a crush on her, so I made sure she knew how right she was. Hello, I, 24 year old female, have a completely chaotic dumpster fire for a family. If it isn't one thing, it's the next, and as such, I do not visit my family unless forced, or on holidays, because they're invited despite my suggestions. Here more recently, last summer I believe, my aunt got into a problem with me, the eldest of my siblings, and my eldest younger sister, 21, because my aunt felt it was her right to bully and abuse my youngest sister through her own children and their phones. Which, okay, that was a thing, but this post isn't entirely about that. I called CPS because of some allegations that came my way about the treatment of my aunt's child. And because of that, she was trying to figure out who did it and was gossiping with my elder cousin, her adult stepdaughter, about who it could be and said, and I'm quoting, Well, it could have been OP. She does have a crush on me. When my cousin looked flabbergasted at such a ludicrous statement, my aunt's nine-year-old daughter piped up, It's true, she really does. What the freak? So, not only is my aunt abusive and less than dirt in my opinion, she's also completely delusional and is so much so her children know of this particular belief? Now, when I heard this ridiculousness, I didn't know what to do with it really. Like, what do you say and do about that? Blow up at her? Call her an insufferable pig? Dive deeper when she started believing this? Blasting her online, etc.? And then? Malicious compliance came to mind, and the Grinch's grin smeared across my face. Starting from that day I heard this rumor, Annie and every time I saw her, I flirted hard. Oh my god, Auntie, aren't you the sexiest thing I've seen today? Or, my god, Uncle, I wouldn't let that beaut through your fingers. If you ever want a massage, let me know, I would love to give one to the prettiest girl here. Gosh, there is just no way you're over 50 years old. Uncle, you're a very, very lucky man. As examples, I whistle as a greeting to her, and I make sure to wink at her at least once per interaction. She doesn't know my cousin, her stepdaughter, told me about her accusation. She looks so uncomfortable every time I approach or even arrive at family gatherings, and I freaking love it. Karma's a witch. Maybe don't bully and abuse kids and fill your own children with nonsense rumors like your niece, who you've known since she was 8 years old, wanting to doodle you. I'm never going to stop. I have a crush on my aunt, after all. I guess if you can't beat them, join them? I mean, if somebody's gonna make a ridiculous claim like that, maybe it's more fun just to play along. You know, make them uncomfortable for making such a stupid claim. Our next story is, management says I'm losing my unused vacation days because of a new unpublished handbook rule. Okay, I will comply with the rules of this new unpublished handbook, but these four paid unused vacation days will cost you thousands. I worked for a company with great pay and benefits, one of which was vacation days. I worked there for years without any performance or attendance issues. I was also an employee who would not work overtime. I give 100% while I'm there. That's all I have to offer. Other than that, no issues. Each year I'd pre-planned my vacation days. We had to put our plans on a calendar for approval. 
and I wanted to receive my approval before confirming my plans, so I did everything as early as possible. I had no vacation request problems for years and did not hear of other employees having issues with their vacation time or pay. Then, one year, all of a sudden, after using all but four of my vacation days, management said I had no additional paid vacation time. I reviewed our online handbook, gathered my requested and approved time off, and checked my check stubs to verify the paid vacation days I'd taken thus far. I presented everything to management for research. My direct manager said he checked, and I didn't have four additional vacation days. That wasn't good enough, so I asked him to forward it to his manager. His manager said the same thing. That wasn't good enough. Eventually, my concerns reached the center manager. The center manager called me into a meeting. I again presented my findings, showing I had four unused vacation days left. He then began discussing changes to our vacation policy while making eye contact and smiling. He turned his computer around to show me the new handbook they constructed, reflecting the new vacation policy. Wait a minute, what? There is an online employee handbook, yet I'm supposed to go by a new handbook not known to employees? Make that make sense. I politely said, okay, and walked out. I removed my four days from the vacation calendar. I then began chatting with other employees to see the number of days they had taken for that year and the number of days they might have left. Conversations like, how was your vacation? How long did you stay? Are you choosing a different place to spend the rest of your vacation days? Asking these and related questions allowed me to calculate the number of vacation days they had used or had remaining. I did not find one other employee having my issue with vacation time. I waited a couple of months and filed a lawsuit while working there. Other employees didn't know about my lawsuit, at least not from me, but I'm sure management knew. The lawsuit discovery process revealed an email chain. The email chain showed the center manager directly asking human resources about my four unused vacation days and human resources confirming I had four unused vacation days. The center manager used a fictitious new handbook to cover his and other management actions, denying my unused vacation time. Shortly after that, we settled, and they paid thousands for four unused vacation days. I had to resign, of course, and the center manager and other management lost their positions, retired, or quit. All I wanted was my unused paid vacation time, but what I received was much more. I mean, the whole thing already was a huge question mark the moment the new employee handbook that nobody else has seen, nobody else has ever heard of, and was never made aware to anybody came into the picture. At that point, the whole thing was going down and it was going down quickly. And honestly, good on OP for standing up for themselves and not rolling over here. I'm not gonna lie, if I were in OP's position, I would be absolutely livid, but I think I would also probably just try to get over it to be honest. Our next story is, sister demands I show my laptop screen, ended up seeing what she didn't want to see, and changed her mind. To be straightforward, I, 24 at the time, draw explicit furry content as a second job. My sister, 22 at the time, and I share the same house and room, typical of our culture, and she is obsessed with her privacy. Lots of crazy stuff, such as locking me out of our room if I leave her too long, doesn't want me walking near her while she uses the laptop, gets upset with me if I even glance at her laptop or phone. I put up with it since it doesn't bother me. That year, we changed room. She chooses the spot she wants her desk to be in, the best spot, and she sits facing the wall so her laptop is visible to me, who is sitting with my back to the wall. Kinda hard to explain without a diagram, but I sit facing the room, as in I can see everything in the room from here. My sister doesn't like it. She demanded I turn my desk around so that I sit facing away from her so she can see me all the time to make sure I'm not looking at her laptop. She already knows what I do is my second job, but I decided to remind her again and told her I work with explicit contents. But she insisted. After almost two weeks, she must have seen half a dozen furry characters in various predicaments and things beyond her wildest imaginations. So, I tried moving my desk back to my previous, more private spot, facing her, to see if she demands I change it back. She didn't, didn't get a complaint from her since. I mean, obviously, I think the real problem here is OP still sharing a room with their sister. I mean, I get it, it's a cultural thing, 
But is there any bigger of a sign of a cry for independence and their own space? Especially at 22, I hope she can eventually figure out how to get a space of her own. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now if you want to hear another awesome malicious compliance story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.